Hey everybody, my name is Frank and this is the Pothum Programming Video Log and today I'm going to be talking about the 2D cross product formula. So this is the formula right here for 2D cross product. It's pretty simple. Uh, V0.x times V1.y minus V0.y times V1.x. Now the thing about the 2D cross product is it doesn't yield a 2D vector, it yields a scalar product. Uh, with 3D cross product or just cross product as it is regularly said is going to work with 3d vectors and if you were to imagine these would be 3d vectors they would be contained in a plane a three-dimensional plane and the 3d cross product would be the vector that is perpendicular to that plane in either the left hand side or the right hand side so cross product generally is the result of 3d vectors and it it renders a 3D vector that is perpendicular to the plane containing the two 3D vectors you're testing cross product on. So this is 2D, it's not 3D. We're going to get a scalar product, and right now the cross product of these two vectors is going to be 1600. So let's check out some cool stuff you can glean just using cross product and some 2D vectors. So the first cool thing that you'll find is that cross product is going to be negative. I mean, if you have it set up this way with V0 and V1 in this particular formula, negative is going to be the right-hand cross product, and positive is going to be the left-hand cross product. So if V0 is on the left-hand side of V1, we're going to have a positive cross product. If it's on the right side, we're going to have a negative cross product. Now, you could technically you could switch these around, make this V1 and this V0 if you prefer to have positive cross product on the right side and negative on the left side. This is just the way I did it. So left-hand side is going to be positive. Right-hand side is going to be negative. Another cool thing about cross product is if you line these two up perfectly. So I'm going to set each x value to 0 if I can manage to get that. Cross product is going to be 0. So when two vectors are in line with each other and they're not diverging apart in terms of direction, we're going to have a cross product of 0. And just like dot product with 90 degrees, cross product at 180 degrees or 0 degrees is going to be 0. So if I go the opposite direction here, if I can manage to get 0 right there, doesn't matter if they're facing 180 degrees away from each other or 0 degrees apart from each other, we're going to get a cross product of 0. So this is a good way to test the orientation of a point relative to a line. So let's say we have a game scenario where vector 1 is going to be the ground and vector 0 is going to just be a ball bouncing off the ground. So if we were to determine uh, the position of the ball or this yellow vector relative to the ground, and we wanted to test is it below the ground or is it above the ground, we can just use cross product. I mean that's a little bit of overkill but theoretically you could. Um, so long as we're above ground here on the left hand side of the blue vector cross product is going to be positive. As soon as we pass to the other side, we're going to get negative. So right there is a practical use case. And the cool thing about this is if you want a sloped hill, cross product is going to tell you what side of that sloped hill you're on. So this is a really great use case for cross product. Now you'd have to work out some other stuff uh, about the vectors because obviously you're not going to use 2D vectors. Not everything is going to start at the same origin. Um, this is really just determining what direction they're facing relative to each other, but that's still a really great use case, and you could work that out and determine what side of a line or a vector a point is on, just like I just showed you right here. If it's above, we got positive. If it's below, we got negative. So those are some really cool things you can do with cross product. Anyway, stick around. I'm going to have some more videos on just some simple vector math concepts, and ultimately I'm trying to build up to a really cool GJK implementation for collision detection with convex polygons and it's going to use all these different little things like cross product and dot products and I'm going to write a couple more examples to cover some basic vector math and stick around for that and hopefully you guys learn something. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.